Right, guys, welcome to Irish Funny Vlogs. Welcome back to another Europa Conference League preview game. We've Shamrock Rovers up against Flora Tallinn in Tallinn in Estonia. Now, Philip, this is their opportunity, I suppose, over two legs to actually get into the group stages. And uh, looking at Flora Tallinn, I was kind of looking at Levadia because obviously they played Dundalk very recently and good side, good side. But Dundalk did beat them over two legs, just about, mind you. But Levadi are 12 points ahead of Flora in the league in Estonia and they have three games at hand on them or something. But even so, um, it is a decent marker, let's be honest, isn't it? It's a decent marker for Rovers to look at. And although I don't think it's going to be easy for Rovers at all, it's a tie that they are capable of winning to get through to the group stage, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Definitely, I suppose. If uh, You made a good point there, Jared, they keep about it if you... If you'd have thought that Rovers would have been into the final stage and playing against a side like Flora Tallinn, you'd have bit their hand yeah. off in a sense, you know, because although, as you said, there's no guarantees in this game because they are able to, like, the, the, the division does tend to bring good squads into the European competitions, you know, um, they're going to be no pushover, you know, and they're going to they're gonna come with a game plan and I've no doubt about it that they will be very, very competitive and I suppose that's something that obviously is concerning, but Again, you believe in your own quality, you believe in your own team and I suppose I think Rovers might just have a bit more quality when it comes to it at the end of the day, but saying that big competition, big miss in Europe, anything can happen. Are you satisfied the Rovers are actually away in the first leg? Yeah, actually I, I am because I think um, I think the big thing now, Keith, that we're going to chat about as well is the 3,500 fans back in Tala. That, like, yeah. The, the 1,500 have made such a difference since they've been there. And I'm just like I'm. Re I'm not gonna get to go myself personally because I won't be here. But uh, it, it's it's gonna be something incredible to watch. Like three and a half thousand fans back in a stadium, uh, in Tala Stadium that is. And like I can just tell that if Rovers, I think they will bring the game back to Tala. There will be a lot to play for if they do that. I just I can see that being the thing that gets us over the line. Even if we don't play the best of football, I just think those extra two thousand fans that are gonna be in there are gonna carry us over the line. But if you think about it, the atmosphere was very good, wasn't it, for the game against Slovan? So you're, yeah. you're talking about slightly more than Dublin here as well. So, you know, that's yeah. going to make a huge difference. And as you say, like in the first leg, um, at worst, you can see Rovers lose the game, but still being in with an opportunity to get through when it gets to the second leg in Tala, like. Yeah, of course. And I suppose the good thing is, Keith, is at the minute we're not conceding too many goals, you know, and that's a big, big thing for any side that's playing in Europe. And, Look, I know the, the uh, calibre of opposition was questionable in the last high, and, but Rovers still had to do a job, and Rovers went there and kept a clean sheet, you know, and kept a clean sheet at home, and clean sheets in Europe are hard to come by, you know, and I suppose that's something that I think will take a lot out of, and again, I, I, just see, I just see us doing the same again, I can see us clean, keeping a clean sheet over there, I'm not sure if we'll win the game, but again, I've said it before, I'll say it again, Bradley doesn't change for anyone and he's going to go about this game the way he would normally go about any other game, Keith. Knocking the ball around. We've seen the goal back. I've seen the goal back there against Drada the weekend. 18 passes in the build-up. Absolutely brilliant football, like, you know. And um, I just think that'll be the same again. Rovers will go there with a game plan to play some football and try to open up the opposition. I think the fact as well, Keith, that it is a way in the first leg I think Flora kind of have an emphasis that they're going to have to come out and they're going to have to try to get something, you know, and that's something that might open the game up for overs like we've seen against 280, you know, and I think that might make it slightly easier, but saying that they are going to be stronger than 280 and we are going to have to be on our guard defensively because at the end of the day, they can cause us a threat at any stage and that's something that obviously you have to be cautious about, but again you have to focus on your own strengths and your own weaknesses. And I think Rovers have more strengths than weaknesses when it comes to this side against Flora. Also, Rovers are in better form, Phil. I was just looking at Flora. They've actually, the last six games, they've, let me get this right, they've lost five and drawn one. So um, that has to be a thing coming into the game. Because you know yourself, if you're not, look at Sligo uh, beating in Europe, like banging off form, like, you know what I mean? I think they beat them two months earlier, you know, so I think it does make a difference, like both teams are in different form coming into the game, like Yeah, well, I suppose you have to look at it as well, keep the other side to a big night, big competition, that may kind of take a side step, we've seen in the cup last week, a couple of shocks, do you know what I mean that just weren't expected and I was, look, obviously you'd want to be coming into this game on top form and firing on all, and there's obviously Flora aren't doing that at the moment but, um yeah, look, 
again, they're not the strongest team in the division, Keith, as well. Like, we need to bear that in mind in their division, that is. So, like, that is something that you would be conscious about. But, again, I, I'm I'm always nervous. I'm always optimistic when it comes to Rovers. But you see me the other day and draw that even a small, <laughs> little, a small little period of, like, two or three minutes. And I'm like, Jesus, we're going to concede. So, look... I, 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 don't, I can imagine yourself, Keith, as well. I'd say I'm very excited at the opportunity of an Irish team having a chance to go into the group stages, like you know, and it's it's great for the league as well, not just Shamrock Rovers. And look, you'll have people turn around and slating us and saying, oh, "I hope they don't go through." Bows, like your man from Fibsborough saying, "I hope they don't go through," and the same probably up with Dundalk. But I, I know, in in all honesty, the, the majority of the league would love to see Rovers go through because it's great for the league, and obviously it gives us more points in the in the UEFA rankings. The coefficient, that's it, yeah. yeah. And uh, look, the more the better, and I suppose the better exposure it is for the league as well. Yeah, and I suppose the point is the jackpot as well, Philip. I mean, this is huge when you think about it. We're talking about three million here. That's incredible. Like, Absolutely. <laughs> and to, 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 I had to ask you, uh, did, did you see the post yesterday? Who's going to be showing the game? Yeah, I did. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. Very, it's very, very, uh, it's very, very... Um, what what what's the word I'm looking for? Hypocritical. Is that yeah. the one? Yeah, yeah, it's, sure it's so, it is, yeah. Um, like I, I just think it's it, it, look, it's great as well. The exposure that it will give the league. I'd imagine they they might do a bit of promotion for a very little they tend to do, but I'd say they might do a bit for this game because it's a big game. They might get people sitting down and watching it. But uh, look, I suppose you have to take the good with the bad and they are going to show the game which is great and I suppose I hope everyone that's watching the video and everyone that that is associated with the league will get will get their bum down on a chair and watch the both legs because I think they're showing both legs so yeah look a very exciting time for the club Keith very exciting time for the league and I suppose look Dundalk done it last year and as much as I hate to see another team do it in a sense I'm kind of like yeah do you know what it's good that they're in the league uh, it's good that they're in the group stages and I hope now people will look at it and say the same thing for us Keith because we are good enough we are capable and I would fancy our chances if we do go through into the group stages to pick up at least a few points yeah I think that's a good thing as well without going into the other kind of teams that are in Europe but just as a general point I'm trying to make the fact that um, it's not just the champions of our league that have actually shown up well in Europe that other teams have as well so it's not just say one isolated team the others have been rubbish I think that's a good thing to be honest for the league as well to be honest with you but I suppose if you were going to pick your team Philip uh, what way would you go what, what team selection your midfield might be interesting but uh, what's the selection for you? I think, to be honest with you, Madison goal obviously is a no-brainer. I think Pico, um, Liam and Lee Grace at centre half. I think I think Liam plays in the left centre half. Uh, I think um, having a probably play left left wing back. I I was actually really impressed when I look back on the game with him the other day. I thought he was just solid. Um, everything he done was just solid and I think that's what we need on, on the night look don't get me wrong Liam Scales fantastic he can play there but I just think I just think that the left centre half I think suits him a bit more for some reason I, I don't know so, why so, yeah. Uh, yeah so I, I think that's hopefully um, right wing back I would I wouldn't go with Joey I'd probably go with Ronan Finn to be honest with you I think he's done well in that position at times and I think the, I just think the experience as well like he has is really really uh, helpful when it comes to that role and then I suppose mid midfield, uh, Keith. I, look, there's no brain. Or Gary O'Neill has to start the game, in my opinion. Um, I look back again on the draw of the game since I've watched the Witcher Keith live, and as soon as he brought on Gary O'Neill, like we were just so comfortable. Like it was, it's so strange what he does to a football team, uh, and like he doesn't even have to be on the ball. Just the positions he's picking up and all, you know. I just think he has to start. Um, obviously, it's going to be him and. I'd love to see what start, but I don't know. He just tends not to go with those two for some reason. It's you know now I know he did it on one of the nights, one of the European games, but it's not something that we see too often. And I don't know if that will be the case on the night, but I would hope he would start what's. Um, and then look, I suppose then you have this conversation about Danny Mandrew. Look, he's. It's strange because we watched him there the other day again, Keith, and he just kind of phased out of a game. He didn't offer much and. You know, it's it's a difficult one. I, I personally would probably go with Bork. I think he should start anyways. Um, where he starts now is a different kettle of fish altogether because uh, obviously he can play in a couple of positions for Alvers, but I think the best is behind the centre forward, to be honest with you, 100%. Um, Gaffney up front, 
And Ooh, Rich geez. Tell, I think you're thinking, is it? Mid-field. Richie Tell, sorry, yeah, Richie, yeah. Richie probably in behind, and then I yeah, Richie Tell, Philip, Richie, yeah, to play I with actually Gary think Philip, the conundrum is uh, what do you call it, Mandra and Burke. I'm just questioning will he play Mandra and Burke away from home because he might stick Watts in there because Watts is a bit more to his uh, get round the park off yeah. the ball play, let's say as well. So that'd be my thought. Like I could be wrong, but that's just my thought. He might think that Mandra and Burke might be a little bit too, too aggressive. I don't want to say like passengers, that's a bit harsh, but they're not the type that are going to get round the field as well as a Dylan Watts. And if you have him, Tell and O'Neill in there, you've a bit more of that. But also you still have the drive from Watts going forward. So it's not as if it's defensive, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, of course, Keith. And do you know something? Tell completely passed me mind. He will 100% start again. Yeah, he's from... He's been exceptional since he's come in, Keith. And I don't think people are talking about him enough. I just think he's been so, so good. There's get there's games and points in games where he might not be 100 percent at it, but he's he's coming up with crucial moments. We've seen in the European toy the goal he scored. Look, we went out like in the in the Champions League that was, but I think he was just he I think he if we didn't have him in the game, I don't think we'd have won the toy in the night, to be honest with you. I just thought he was exceptional. And, He's been really good since that as well, and it hasn't really fizzled out or anything, you know. I just think he's been really, really good in terms of how we go about our business. So I think he has to start. Um, look, it's a no-brainer for me. Rory Gaffney has to start as well. There's no question about it. He's been... Uh, I've, I've fallen head over heels for him. I, I didn't fancy him at all at the start of the season, but now he's just coming into himself and... Look, the the red hair can be a grower, you see, Philip. Yeah, yeah, it must be something. But I tell you <laughs> one thing, I didn't, fa- I didn't fancy him at the start of the season. I just thought he looked a bit out of shape, and I just, it was, it actually reminded me of um, Lukaku playing for Manchester United. He just didn't suit how they played, you know. And I just kind of said to myself, where is Bradley thought that this lad's gonna fit in? But since, since he's he's been on this run, I just everything I look at him and see him do, I'm just like Jesus Christ, that was brilliant. And you seen it as well when he came on the other day. He was he was a big difference in holding the ball up. And I think you said it. Someone said it to me. I think I think that's what Drada are missing. Someone that can hold the ball up and get players around him. You know, and I think he's he's he has to start. He was brilliant in the the second leg against Tuaita as well. And yeah, I, I just. I'm I'm optimistic about how he'll go about it as well, though, Keith. As I said earlier on, he will attack the game and he will go for it. He'll obviously have a bit more of a defensive mindset when it comes to the opponent that we're playing in terms of Tuaita. As he I think like I said it in the in the review um of the Tuaita game, he Bradley thought we were in control ten minutes in and it's still nil nil, like you know, well it's one nil in aggregate, but uh, you kind of thought, geez, to wait, they're going to come and have a go. And 10 minutes in, Bradley shouting, relax, we're in control. And that's kind of something you're looking and saying, I'm about to leap out my see here at the panic of even conceding. And he's saying, don't worry, relax, it's all good. Like So I think he, I don't think it'll be that strong of an approach this time from Bradley. I think he will be yeah. more uh, cautious of what they, what uh, Flora will offer. But I think he'll be confident, Keith. I think we're all confident in the sense that we have, we have the capabilities to go and win the game. And, Look, I'm not going to say we're going to go and comfortably go through because I don't think it'll be anything like that. I think it'll be a bit of a, a, a tough one when it comes to the toy and over the two legs. But that little bit of quality, I think we might just have a keep. You going to call us for the first leg? What score? Oh, Jesus, I knew you'd say that as well. You hate this, don't you? <laughs> uh, um, do you know what? I'm going to be... I'm going to go... I'm going to go one nil. I'm gonna go one nil, and I think it'll be, yeah, I'm gonna go one nil, Rovers. Sorry, yeah, and um, I just think Keith, the point I made earlier on, I think Flora are gonna have to be conscious that they're gonna need something to go to Talawi. I think that will open it up. Like Tuaita, we've seen it with Tuaita. They literally sat in for for 90 minutes against us in Tala, and I think I don't think Flora would do that in Tala. But uh, in uh, I don't think Flora would do that in Tala. But I do think that they will go there and saying we need something from the first leg, so we have to go and attack the game. And I think that might open up. And I think your point earlier on, Keith, on the fact that it being the away leg forced, I think that suits Rovers down to the ground. So I'm gonna go one nil uh, uh, away over there. And look, I couldn't give a damn what score the result is at home as long as we as long as we don't lose the game and we go through. So yeah, hopefully optimistic, Keith. I hope you are as well, and everyone else is. And look. I hope everyone can get behind us and watch the game as well. Look, obviously, it's going to be live on TV. So if you're around and if you're able to get your arse on a seat and get behind us, even if you don't support us, if you support, uh, support on Dark Bows, I don't give a damn, get behind us. It's a big, big game. It's a big, big game for the history of the, uh, of, of the uh, 
the league. It's the first year that the Europa Conference is in place. It'd be great to have an Irish team in a first time round. Absolutely well said, Philip. Look, guys, thanks for watching the video. Like the video, subscribe if you're new, and don't forget to hit your bell notification button so you don't miss a video. Brilliant stuff, Philip. Thanks, Keith.